Rahim, this video is about cesarean section from NICE guideline. Now, let me tell you the indications of planned cesarean section which are in the NICE guideline. And those indications are breech presentation, multiple pregnancy, preterm birth, placenta previa, cephalopelvic disproportion, mother to child transmission of infection, and maternal request. So, what is written in NICE guideline 2021 uh, about the breach presentation? Uh, discuss with the woman the benefit and risk of the planned vaginal birth versus the planned cesarean birth for the breach presentation and option for external cephalic version. Now, offer women who have an uncomplicated singleton breach pregnancy after 36 plus 0 weeks the external cephalic version. Unless the woman is in established labor. Okay, so in that case, we will not offer external cephalic version or if there is fetal compromise or if the woman has ruptured membrane or vaginal bleeding or if the woman has any other medical condition, for example, severe hypertension, that would make the external cephalic version inadvisable. Now, before carrying out a cesarean birth for uncomplicated singleton breech pregnancy, carry out an ultrasound scan to check that the baby is in breech presentation, breech position. Do this as late as possible before cesarean birth procedure. Normal uh, multiple pregnancy is another indication. Okay, we have different types of the multiple pregnancies and basically nice guideline about the multiple pregnancy explain all these things. In DCDA, we have to deliver the patient at 36 weeks by cesarean section if the first twin is non-cephalic. In, in monochorionic diamniotic at 36 weeks, we do cesarean section if first uh, twin is non-cephalic. Uh, okay. So, as in uh, first two cases, we have diamnions. So, in that case, is if the first uh, twin is cephalic, then we can offer the normal vaginal delivery. But in other cases, we will do cesarean sections. Like monochorionic, monoamniotic, we will deliver between 32 to 33 plus 6 weeks um, by cesarean section. In trichorionic, triamniotic, which is uncomplicated triplet, we deliver at 35 weeks by cesarean section. In triamniotic dichorionic, we deliver at 35 weeks by cesarean section. In triamniotic monochorionic, that is complicated triplet, we deliver at 35 weeks by cesarean section. Now we can do cesarean section for preterm labor as well. Preterm labor is the labor between 36 plus 36 and 36 plus 6 weeks for the breach presentation. Um, in that case, if you have breach presentation, in that case we will consider cesarean section, but not all the cases. Now, placenta previa is an indication of cesarean section. If placenta is low lying at 32 plus uh, 32 uh, to 34 weeks scan. Guardings to scan in case of the prior cesarean section. And in that case, we will offer color Doppler as a first diagnostic test for morbidly adherent placenta. And if the color Doppler suggests morbidly adherent placenta, we will offer MRI as it is safe and it diagnoses um, MAP, that is morbidly adherent placenta, and it clarifies the degree of invasion. Now, coming to cephalopelvic disproportion, do not use pelvimetry for decision making about mood of the bird and do not use uh, these things for decision making about the mood of the bird as do not, uh, they do not accurately predict the cephalopelvic disproportion. And those are maternal shoe size, maternal height, estimation of the fetal size, that is ultrasound or clinic examination. And a mother to child transmission of infections are also indications. Now, if we have HIV, viral load of more than 50 copies per ml at 36 weeks, we have to do cesarean section between 38 and 39 weeks. If viral load is less than 50 copies per ml at cesarean section, for obstetric indications, we perform after 39 weeks. Hepatitis B virus. Do not uh, offer cesarean section for hepatitis B virus. Often baby vaccination and immunization. Hepatitis C virus alone. Do not offer cesarean section. Uh, hepatitis C virus plus HIV. Offer cesarean section. Now herpes simplex. Offer women with the primary genital herpes simplex infection occurring in the third trimester of the pregnancy. Plan cesarean section to decrease the risk of the neonatal um, 
HSV infection. Do not routinely offer pregnant women with recurrent HSV infection a planned cesarean birth outside of the context of the research. BMI. Do not use the body mass index of over 50 kg per meter square alone as an indication for planned cesarean birth. Maternal request. In that case, we have to explore, discuss, and record the reasons for her request. We have to discuss the oral benefit and risk of cesarean section compared with the vaginal birth. If the reason is tocophobia, tocophobia is in fact the fear of labor pains, or any other severe anxiety about the childbirth, we have to refer the patient to perinatal maternal mental health specialist. If still requesting cesarean section, we have to offer cesarean section. Now, there are certain factors which reduce the likelihood of cesarean section. You have to inform the woman that continuous support during the labor from woman, with or without trial training, reduces the likelihood of cesarean birth. We have to use a partogram with a four-hour uh, actual line to monitor the progress of women in spontaneous labor with an uncomplicated single-term pregnancy term to reduce the likelihood of cesarean birth. Now, moreover, we have to involve the consultant obstetrician in decision making for cesarean birth. Basically, in this uh, video, I have uh, highlighted very important points of the NICE guideline. Okay, and I recommend you to study important points from here and then open the NICE guideline. It will be very easy for you to understand after that. Now, we have to study the factors having no influence on the likelihood of cesarean section. And those are walking in the labor, non supine position during second stage of the labor, immersion in the water during labor, epidural analgesia during the labor, the use of the raspberry leaves. Okay, people say that these are having some likelihood of reducing the risk of cesarean section, but the research shows that they do not have very much profound effects. Now, coming to the point of slow progression in the labor and cesarean section. Now, in this um, guideline, it's written about slow progression that we do not have to offer these things like active management of the labor, okay, early uh, routine amniotomy, routine to early vaginal examination, oxytocin in labor, um, if the labor becomes slow and early amniotomy, okay, because these do not have much profound effect. Now, eating during the labor, inform the women that eating the low residue diet during the labor, that toast, cracker, and uh, low fat cheese results in the larger gastric volume, but the effect on the risk of desperation if anesthesia is needed is uncertain. Okay, she can take some uh, light foods, but not too much, and um, maybe she needs anesthesia due to certain reasons, or maybe she lands in cesarean section. So in that case, eating is risky for her. Now, inform the woman that having isotonic drinks during the labor prevents ketosis without a concomitant increase in the gastric volume. Now, timing of the planned cesarean birth, do not routinely carry out planned cesarean birth before 39 weeks as this can increase the risk of respiratory morbidity in, in babies. Now, classification according to severity category one immediate threat to the life of the woman or fetus for example suspected uterine rupture and major placental abruption cord prolapse fetal hypoxia or persistent fetal bradycardia in which we have to do cesarean section within 30 minutes category two roughly we have to do cesarean section within 75 minutes um, in this case, we may have maternal or fetal compromise, which is not uh, immediately life-threatening. In category 3, no maternal or fetal compromise, but needs early birth. Now, category 4, birth time to suit women or healthcare providers. Procedure. We have to prepare the patient routinely perform uh, things are CBC for anemia, antibody screen, blood group for saving of the serum, and do not routinely perform cross-matching of the blood, a clotting screen, preoperative ultrasound for the localization of the placenta, and um, with regard to anesthesia, insert uh, urinary catheter to prevent over distension of the bladder.
Now, anesthesia, of regional anesthesia in preference to the general anesthesia, even in placenta previa. And prevention of the hypotension with the region, with regional anesthesia. Okay, left lateral tilt of up to 15 degree or you try and displacement, displacement, sorry, and start intravenous infusion of phenyl epinephrine at just the rate of the infusion to keep the maternal BP at 90% or more of the baseline value and divide the decrease to less than 80% of the baseline. Manage hypotension with intravenous uh, ephedrine boluses. Use intravenous crystalline co-loading in addition to vasopressor. Now, prevention and management of hypothermia and shivering. Warm heavy fluids, 500 ml or more, and the blood products used during cesarean birth at 37 degrees Celsius using a fluid warming devices. Warm all irrigation fluids used during the cesarean birth to 38 to 40 degrees Celsius in thermostatically controlled cabinet. Consider forced air warming for the woman who shiver and feel cold or have a temperature less than 36 degrees Celsius during the cesarean birth. Now, surgical techniques. Infection control, first of all, we have to do the skin preparation. For that, we use alcohol-based chlorhexidine before cesarean infection. And if that is not available, use alcohol-based iodine. Vaginal preparation with the rupture membrane, use aqueous iodine before cesarean infection. That reduces the risk of antimetritis. And if that is not available, use aqueous color hexidine and antibiotic prophylactic antibiotics before skin in CN. Now, neonatal care. Practitioners care in the resuscitation of the newborn baby should be present during cesarean section performed under general anesthesia or if there is evidence of the fetal compromise. Ensure appropriate thermal care, at least skin to skin contact between the mother and the baby. Support women to start breastfeeding as soon as possible after the birth. Now, coming to the pain management after cesarean section, after spinal and epidural. Use oral morphine sulfate. If cannot take oral medications, offer IV IM subcutaneous morphine. And after GA, IV uh, patient control analgesia or oral morphine sulfate and add regular paracetamol and NSAID to reduce the need for opiate. And if NSAID cannot be used as add codeine to paracetamol. Do not offer codeine or cocodamol to the breastfeeding woman. Now, in case the severe pain and pain relief is not sufficient, full assessment to exclude the other causes for the pain, for example, substance, hemorrhage, urinary retention, and stronger medications, short course of the tramol or oxycodone, and the lowest effective dose. And laxative with the OPIs, prevention of the constipation, and hematics with OPIs if needed for nausea and vomiting. And if BMI is 35 or more, consider negative pressure wound therapy and remove the standard dressing 6 to 24 hours after cesarean section. Now observe fever, signs of infection such as increasing pain, wetness or distort, separation or dehiscence. Advice, loose, comfortable clothes and uh, cotton underwear. Clean, gently clean and dry the wound daily. And drinking and eating, patient can eat and drink as normal if recovered well without complication. Urinary catheter, remove once she is mobile after regional anesthesia, no sooner than 12 hours after the last stop of dose. Respiratory physiotherapy, not routine. And then discharge the patient. Now we bank vaginal birth after cesarean section. The risk of the uterine rupture is high for the planned vaginal birth. The chance of the vaginal delivery is higher for previous cesarean section was followed by vaginal delivery. Labor in a unit with immediate access to cesarean section and on-site blood transfusion services. Electronic fetal monitoring during labor is also very important. Then specific percentages mentioned in the NICE guidelines needs to be remembered because sometimes exam questions come related to these percentages. Percentage of the women having cesarean birth, 25 to 30%. Women who are having cesarean births, the risk of fetal restoration is about 2%. Uh, and